Hello, this is Ed Fisher. Today we will talk about composite functions and how to find their domain and range. First, you probably want to know what a composite function is. Before we do that, let's review what a function is. You may remember that a function takes any input, usually x, and maps it to an output, which we often call y. We frequently think of these as some form of equation. However, that does not need to be the case. Sometimes functions can be simple tables of values or even symbols. So long as each input maps to only one output, you have a function. Here are a couple of examples. Note that in the right hand example, y is a function of x. To more explicitly show this relationship, we can write y using function notation to get y of x equals 7x plus 2. The equation is unchanged. We have only noted that y depends on x. In this situation, we say that x is the argument of the function y. So back to our main topic. A composite function is formed when the output of one function is used as the input for another. For example, we could take the output of our function f and plug that into our function y above. We annotate that we are doing this using a small open circle. There we are. Now you can see the circle between y and f. And we would say this is y is composed with f. Or we can put it in function notation, which would be annotated y of f of x. Verbally, this is how I usually say a composite function. It seems more natural than the is composed with wording, but both are correct. Written either way, both say to take the result of function f and plug it into the function for y. Let's do that now for our functions f and y. You can see that on the table that when x is 1, f of x is 7. There we are. Plugging that 7 into y gives us 7 times 7 plus 2, which simplifies to 51. Doing this for our other values results in the table shown here. I've added the composed values y of f of x to the original table definition of f. Now that we know what a composite function is, we need to discuss its domain and its range. To review, the domain is simply the values that can be put into our function. We need to not only think about what makes sense in the equation, but what makes sense in real life. For example, if our function models the length of boards, it does not make much sense to talk about negative numbers for our input. On the other hand, the range is simply all the possible results of using the function from the items in the domain. In a composite function, both original functions have their own domain and range, and we must combine them. Here we are asked to find f composed with g, or just simply f of g of x. Notice that g is our input to f in this situation. So plugging the formula to, for g into f, we get this compound fraction. Finding a common denominator for the terms on the bottom simplifies us to, and simplifying that gives us, and finally using our rule to divide fraction gives us, now we can see our composed function cannot have an x equals 6 because that results in dividing by 0. But we also have to look at our original functions for other domain and range limitations. The input function g of x cannot have x equal to 3, again dividing by 0. And the output function f of g cannot accept any input from g where g is equal to 2. So we need to solve for x when g equals 2. Okay, here we are with 2 plugged in place of g in our original equation. Now multiplying both sides by the denominator x minus 3, distributing our 2 gives, subtracting 2x from both sides, now dividing by negative 1. If you want we can flip the equality around to get x equals 6. Fortunately that was already one of our excluded values of x, along with the 3 from our function g. So our domain is all numbers not equal to 3 or 6. So there's our domain written in set notation. The domain of f of g of x is all x such that x is not equal to 3 and not equal to 6. For our range, we see that f of x is a reciprocal function. As such, it can never equal 0. This means that f of g of x can also never be 0. Similarly, by the rules governing rational expressions, g of x asymptotically approaches but never equals 1. Plugging g equals 1 into f of g, we find that f of 1 would equal negative 1. Since f can never get a 1 from g, 
and f is a one-to-one -one function, f of g of x can never equal negative 1. So our range is all real numbers except negative 1 and 0. And there's our range of f of g of x. All f such that f is not equal to negative 1 and not equal to 0. So, boxing our answers. There we go, our answers are boxed. So to sum up, to form a composite function, we plug one equation in as the input variable for the other, and then simplify. To find the resulting domain and range, we must consider the domain and range of each of the original function, and use that to adjust the range of the composite function. The key for all of this is to be methodical about it. Well, that's all for now. Thank you for watching.